Hello guys, I'm Craig McLean and welcome back to this short series where I'm going to be doing some improvements to the mini twin cam you can see here in the background. This was built now around about six years ago. Uh, unfortunately the last 18 months it hasn't really gone anywhere. I didn't, ta I didn't MOT it when Covid hit because there was no shows on. I was far too busy building the Escort that you've seen all the videos of. And this has kind of been neglected for quite some time. So it's time to get stuck back into it and resolve some of the issues or some of the uh, some of the elements of the build from the initial build that I wasn't happy with. There's a fair few areas that I look back on from the initial build and think it's just not up to standard. It's certainly not up to uh, the standards that I've put into the Escort and it needs rectified and sorted out. So it means the engine's going to be coming out. I'm making a start on that today. I'll go into a little bit more detail in a second as to uh, exactly why the engine's coming back out. But firstly, for people who don't really know what these are all about, these the, uh, mini twin cams, a lot of people that weren't necessarily into the minis would look at it and think, well, that's not a mini engine. A lot of people think that, to be honest. Uh, but it is actually a mini block. It's a mini gearbox, a mini bellhausen. The only difference being, it has a BMW twin cam 16 valve motorbike cylinder head. There's a couple of companies out there that now specialize in the conversion. It's an awesome conversion if you want a twin cam and 16 valve. It can be a lot cheaper than the CAD alternative or the old Jack Knight. It, it's one of them where it's as expensive as you make it. This cost me a fair amount because I went for the specialist components, throttle bodies and plenum chamber and yeah, it ended up growing arms and legs as everything with me ever does. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can use the uh, a lot of the BMW bike parts and make it a lot cheaper for yourself. So the initial head cost £300 from eBay. Uh, that came as a bare head, obviously it had all the valves in and, uh, and everything. This is the LT, there's the LT and the RS. You can also get an 8 valve head in this uh, in this version as well. Uh, obviously I went for, for the 16. So it's, uh, it came as a bare head, like I say, with all the valves in. It then went off to Species Components and had a little plate welded in the side. Um, basically, so you can put this conversion plate on. I'll probably give you a closer view of this as the video goes on. This uh, plate bolts onto the end that you can just see here. Uh, that basically encapsulates the oil into the head. Uh, the little plate that you need welded into the bottom of the head is to stop the oil basically dropping out of the bottom of the cylinder head. Uh, and the other issue is the oil returns from this cylinder head actually overhang the back of the block. So you've got to basically get little fittings welded in and return the oil back to the sump via external lines. Which isn't a bad job, it isn't a bad job to do, but it's just a little bit more tricky when you've got a turbo fitted like I have. Because this has got a Saab GT17 turbo. Uh, now that means that the original place where the oil returns to the block is no longer viable because the turbo is in the way. So therefore I've had to make basically a flange with a, with a 90 degree elbow, again I'll show you a bit closer as the video progresses, to move that little collector for them oil returns out of the way of the turbo. But then it meant that the turbo oil drain had nowhere to go as well. So I made a bit of an adaptation off the side of that elbow uh, to return the oil from the turbo and it looks awful. It's not good enough. It's an absolute nightmare to put together because the little pause that, that goes from the turbo to the return is about a maximum of an inch long. And getting that little hose on, that little rigid hose on at both ends is an absolute nightmare. So I've never been happy with it. Not only that, you do get a little bit of movement with your, with your manifold and your turbo. And that little one inch hose is just going to keep moving and stressing over time. And I've no, I've no doubt in time it will break and we'll end up having oil pouring out everywhere. So it needs changed. And the way I should have done it from the start is drilling a hole in the back of the block, putting a 90 degree uh, threaded elbow in, and then running a hose up to the turbo. But I didn't want to drill the block. But now the time's come, I'm gonna actually drill the block. I'm gonna have to do it because it's the only way to do it right. So yeah, I'm gonna make a start taking this engine out today. It also didn't make the power that it should have when I went to the rolling road session. 
at the time I couldn't figure out why we were only making about 100 and, I think it was 155, 156 brake horsepower when it was capable of 180, 200. And when I came away from that dyno session, I had a chat with specialist components who do this conversion and are very, very clued up on these builds. Um, John Kimmins and Simon, I forget Simon's second name now, it's been many years since I dealt with, the, with them lads. Great, great bunch of lads, by the way. But um, Simon and John, they know the stuff big style with these. And when I spoke to John, uh, he said, what have you set your cam timing at? And I said, I've set my cam timing to, I think it was whatever it says in the build manual, because specialist component to a build manual that explains how to do this build. And basically it's something like, set at something like one mil of lift at top dead. So the valves open one mil at top dead. Well, that's no good for forced induction. That is basically for naturally aspirated when you have a uh, turbo fitted, it's got to be different because basically what's happening is you're blowing your, your turbo pressure right out your exhaust. It's not allowing the pressure to build up. So it didn't matter how much I turned the, the boost up, I was getting no more power. It fell flat on its face. Don't get me wrong. It's still absolutely rapid as it is, but I want more from it. Now, especially that I've got the Escort and I've got another toy, which is kind of my main toy now. It means I'm prepared to tinker with this a bit more because it's no longer my number one although it is still a beautiful car it's no longer my number one so i'm prepared now to do a little bit more tinkering with this so basically the head believe it or not fits onto the block with relatively few mods it's a fantastic kit so basically if you unscrew all your uh, studs out of your block but you leave the center three in the front center three studs in the block, the head, sorry, will drop onto them three studs and it will centralise onto the block exactly where it needs to be. And what you've got to do is you've got to drill and tap the other seven to line up with the head. So you've got to drill and tap the block to relocate the studs for the head. Problem with that is some of them overlap the original holes. So by that I mean where the original hole was, you can see half of the original hole uh, where, where your new stud needs to be. So what you've got to do is you've got to block off all your original stud holes, uh, basically threaded bar, bond them in, have your block surface flushed, and then you have the, uh, the, the block surface drilled and tapped to accept the new location for the other studs. I've actually got ARP studs holding the head down as well. Another little thing I did was what's called a dry deck conversion. So basically, what would normally happen was the water would run up and down from the head to the block and what you do is you stop that because apparently the, the dry decking is a much more uh, it's, it's, it's a better cooling method so basically it comes in the head at one side runs along comes out a pipe at the end back into the block and then runs along i can't remember which direction it goes but it basically does a big a big hoop rather than going up and down through uh, through all the through the, all the water galleries, apparently that is a much better uh, means of uh, of cooling. So I did that as well, which meant I had to block all the water galleries up in the block, and have all the water galleries in the head TIG welded up. That was all done by specialist components, and it's dry decked as well. So yeah, it's a fantastic setup. It's very very refined, apart from the six speed dog box, which makes it a bit uh, a bit more battlefield like, but. Uh, it is a fantastic setup, but the few issues it's got, I do want to resolve, and I'm going to make a start on that today. I'm going to start just unbolting stuff, starting to take this engine out. So I'll give you a bit of a closer uh, close up of the engine when it's out, and all the little areas I've been talking about, and uh, you can see what I'm going to do to rectify a lot of them little issues. Well, here we are. Engine is ready to lift out today. I'll maybe try and put a little bit of footage in if it's been lifted out if I can get the camera in a suitable location. Now it's been three weeks since the last bit of footage you've just seen. I've been extremely lazy of recent. My motivation levels have plummeted since I finished the Escort. I've gone into a routine of not really doing a lot at weekends other than walking the dog um, all over the place. And and yeah, not not really had a lot of motivation. Some days I feel like doing it, others I don't. And I've just not been doing it when I haven't felt like it. And at the end of the day, I've got all winter to get this sorted. So there's no rush. But it's now ready to lift out. I'm going to lift it out today. And then I'll show you a little bit of footage when it's out. 
the issues I've got and how I'm hoping to uh, to rectify them. Anyone watching that often watch YouTubers and think, how do these guys just get on with stuff all the time? Uh, don't be fooled by any of, it, any of it. Most YouTubers will admit that they often suffer from lack of motivation as well. And I can certainly say the same. Um, when I did the Escort, when I built the Escort, you've, uh, most of you have seen the videos, I didn't really suffer from lack of motivation too much. I think I was just so into it, I just carried on and got through it. But uh, the Mini is an absolute pain to work on compared to the Escort. Everything you do on the Mini is jamming your hands into areas to get at bolts and everything's just hard work. Whereas with the Escort, there's dozens of room where whatever you're doing, it just makes life so much easier. And I think that's what's maybe knocked me back with this, just uh, not being <laughs> not being able to be bothered with the hassle uh, that, it, uh, that it takes to work, you know, to work on. Anyways, let's get it lifted out. And then, uh, like I say, I'll show you a bit of further footage. Well, here we go, guys. Here's me and Anthony taking the engine out of the Mini. As you can imagine, quite tricky. The uh, Everything's really, really tight on the uh, on the minis especially when you start having twin cam and turbos to contend with so yeah it is really tricky now we're actually using the method here where we, um, we take the engine out without splitting the ball joints so I don't think a lot of people are aware that you can actually do this quite often when you're taking the drive shafts out people will um, will split the bottom ball joints at least on one side to drop the shafts out but what you can actually do is just lift the engine up, take the take the weight on the crane, and then gradually, as you're lifting it out, pop one joint out, slide the engine over to the other side, and pop the other one out. So you don't actually have to split the ball joints. You can leave the ball joints in place. You can leave the car down on its wheels, take the weight with the crane, and take one drive shaft out at a time as you're lifting it into the air, which is what we've done here. So yeah, we finally get it out and onto the ground and uh, yeah, and in the next video I'll show you a lot more footage of the issues we've had and how I'm going to get around them. So this video will end very shortly uh, when we get the engine lifted out and laid on the garage floor, but we will continue it very, very shortly. I'm hoping to put another video out the following weekend after this one goes out because I do now have a lot of footage built up. So I'm hoping to continue these videos over the Christmas period. So don't think this is the end of it and you're not going to see anything for a while. There will be regular videos coming, at least for the next couple of weeks, if not hopefully the next couple of months. So leave it there guys, and I'll see you very soon.